Hello and welcome. In this video, we will going to discuss regarding data link layer and ARP. As we know that the TCP IP protocol suit does not define any protocol in the data link layer or a physical layer. These two layers are territories of network when connected to make up a internet. So keeping this in the mind, it is necessary to know some more details of the data link layer. For that reason, we are going to address the different issues of the data link layer in this video. So in the first part of this video, we are going to talk regarding say certain basics of data link layer. Then we talk about say the different addressing schemes that are used in the data link layer. Then we will discuss regarding address resolution protocol that is ARP which maps the address of network layer to the address of data link layer. So to begin with first I will define what is internet. As we know that the internet is a collection of interconnected networks. In other words, we can say internet is a combination of networks that are glued together by connecting devices such as routers or switches. If a packet to travel from a host to another host, it needs to pass through a multiple networks. Those networks may be LAN, WAN, which are helping us to connect a different nodes or the different hosts in the network. Normally, when these two hosts are far apart, we need a support of such multiple networks to reach one another. To know regarding this, first we will discuss this example in which we are talking of the allies which is trying to establish a connection with the Bob with the help of some supporting networks such as uh, this LAN, WAN okay, and some ISPs or you can also call it as LAN. Now here we are talking a connection from the perspective of link layer. Now you see in this case, in this example, we need a five logical connections to establish a connection between Alice and a Bob. So we need a support of five logical connections to establish a support of uh, to connection between Alice and a Bob. So this is the first one, and this is the third one. This is the fourth one. And finally, this is the fifth one. We need such a five logical connection in this example to interconnect Bob and allies. So to carry out the communication between the allies and the Bob, we need a support of link layer address. Okay. So link layer address, I'll going to call it as LLA here. Okay. So before going for, before going for the discussion of link layer address, first I will talk regarding nodes and the links. So when I talk of a data link layer, the main purpose or the main uh, job of data link layer to address the issues between the devices which are sitting at two ends of the links. So normally we refer these devices as nodes. Okay, so the main job of link layer is to address the issues between two ends of these links. Okay, such as flow control, error control. Okay, normally we call these things as the services of data link layer. So the flow control, error control, congestion control. So these issues will be addressed by the data link layer 
for uh, devices which are sitting at two ends of the links. Now, when we talk of a network, okay, internet, in which when it comes to a connecting of two hosts, we need many a times we need a support of the devices such as I mean networks such as LANs and WANs. Okay, so now when it comes to interconnecting of two such say networks, we need a support of device known as router. Okay, so this will be my LAN, this will be my WAN. To interconnect them, we need a support of a device which we call it as routers. Okay, so these routers, okay, helping us to create the internet, okay, with the help of connecting multiple networks. Now, these routers and end devices, we refer them as a node when it comes to a data link layer, okay. So, these hosts and routers, we call them as nodes and the link okay sometimes it will be a broadcast link or a multicast multicast link which are helping us to connect these two nodes okay or the connection which is helping us to connect these two nodes we call it as link now before going to a next discussion first we talk regarding the services that are offered by the data link layer normally when you look at a TCP IP model or even for that matter OSI, OSI model, the main purpose of link layer that is data link layer okay, is to serve the network layer, is to serve network layer. So by taking the services of physical layer, so it uses the services of physical layer and it gives the service to a network layer. The main purpose of Data link layer is to provide a service to the network layer. So, we will see first the different services that are offered by the data link layer. The main purpose of the data link layer is the services that are offered by the data link layer are the framing. Okay. The second service that is offered by the data link layer is error control. Third one is flow control. And fourth one is congestion control. Okay. So these are the different services that are offered by data link layer to the higher layers or the layers one which are taking the services from the data link layer. Now to begin with, so we will talk regarding a framing. So basically when you look at the data link layer, okay, so when we talk of a communication between two hosts with the support of some intermediate nodes, okay, normally the data from the network layer at a sending host will going to be encapsulated in the data unit of data link layer that we call it as frame. We call that data unit as a frame. The frame helps us to encapsulate the data that comes from the higher layer. So normally the network layer provides the data to the data link layer in the form of packet. This packet will going to be encapsulated in the frame. So this is my frame. So this will going to encapsulate the packet that comes from the network layer. And this frame will go to have its own header, which will going to have which will going to include the information such as control information and address. This will help the data uh, frame to move from one node to another node. Now, when this particular frame reaches the intermediate nodes, 
the data that is encapsulated in this frame will going to be decapsulated. That means packet will going to be extracted out of this frame. And again, in case if it is an intermediate node, will it will going to create a new frame which again encapsulates this extracted packet into it and the new frame will be made to forward to the other end of the link okay in this way by taking a multiple hops it reaches the destination this encapsulation and decapsulation activity happens at every intermediate nodes and finally once this frame reaches the destination the data that is encapsulated in the frame will going to be decapsulated and it will be handed over to the network layer now before handing over this data to the network layer the error detection activity will going to take place so error will going to be tested whether does it contain any error or what so the one of the main job of data link layer is to check for the error that is present in the data as i said so this error control flow control all these issues are between two ends of the links the devices which are at two ends of the links will going to address these issues at a data link layer basically it will going to address most of the issues are at a local level rather than end to end when it comes to the transport layer we will see many of these services will going to repeat in the transport layer but those issues are at global level but when it comes to the data link layer these issues will be addressed at a local level that means it is talking regarding say for two nodes which are at the two ends of the links so before taking a next action on the data first it will check the errors in case if the data is error free the next action will be taken on the data okay so this is how it will say take care regarding the address uh, uh, take care regarding the errors next is flow control basically this function is to control the say speed of the sender many a times if sender is faster compared to that of the receiver it may lead to a situation sender may overrun the receiver okay so to avoid this type of a situation the flow control task has been uh, service has service is added to the data link layer next is congestion control congestion control although say link may be congested with the frames which may le basically leads to a frame loss say most data link layer protocols do not directly use a congestion control say to uh say we will not see this particular functionality but in wide area networks basically at a data link layer we see the this functionality of congestion control in general congestion control is considered as an issue in the network layer or a transport layer because of its end end to end nature congestion is not because of one device or so congestion is an issue that is created mainly because of multiple device traffic the traffic that is created by multiple devices so that is the reason we call it as uh, say end to end task so the, rather because of that most of the times this congestion control will not be seen in a smaller network such as lions and all 
but sometimes in wide area networks we will find this congestion control task in the data link layer when it comes to a wide area networks now when i talk about the link okay at the big since from the beginning of this video i am just talking regarding the data link layer addresses the issues of two ends of the links okay so what kind of a links it will deal with say it deals with two categories of links one is point to point link another is a broadcast link the point to point link is a one in which say the complete medium capacity will be used by the devices or by the data link layer but the data link layer one which uses only part of the capacity of the link are the category of broadcast links basically broadcast links are the one which will going to be say shared by multiple devices that is the reason only part of the capacity of the link will going to be offered to the devices now these kind of a links okay will lead to a say multiple sub layers in the data link layer basically the requirements for point to point link and a broadcast links are different okay so this leads to a many other times so multiple links um, multiple layers multiple sub layers in the data link layer okay so basically data link layer control say deals with two sub layers one is data link control sub layer another is medium access control sub layer so the data link control sub layer deals with all the issues common to both point to point and a broadcast links whereas media access control sub layer deals only with the issues specific to a broadcast links okay so now to better understand the functionalities of service provided by the link layer and how exactly it got divided into a two layers okay so we represent it in this way okay into uh two different views of data link layer keeping a different links in a mind as i said say that medium access control sub layer deals only with issues specific to a broadcast links so that is the reason whenever a broadcast link issue comes okay so we talk about these two layers but whereas data link control sub layer addresses all the issues that are common to both that is point to point and data link so when it comes to a point to point links the medium access control sub layer is not a part of the data link layer okay when it when it was when it is dealing with only a point to point links okay so that time we don't need a support of mac sub layer okay so sometimes we also call this medium access control sub layer as a mac layer now we'll see how exactly the data link layer helps us to reach the destination with the help of the addressing scheme that is provided in the data link layer normally in the data link layer we use an address okay so that address we call it as physical address we call it as physical address the addressing scheme that is used in the data link layer we call it as physical address and similarly like data link layer network layer also offers a different kind of a addressing scheme 
that addressing scheme we call it as logical address we call it as logical address so logical address is a addressing scheme that is used in the network layer and the addressing scheme that is used in the data link layer we call it as physical layer now why we need a two di different types of addressing schemes so to understand it better i'll take uh, this example in which this alice and bob are connected with the help of three networks okay which are in turn using the support of two routers r1 router and r2 router now at this juncture i am not going to discuss a uh, details of logical addressing but to understand how exactly it is different from a physical address i'll just give you an address say some overview of this logical address logical address is the one which is helping to identify the destination okay every node in the internet will going to have both logical and physical addresses so without the support of logical address and a physical address the communication is not possible every node in the internet will going to have both logical address and physical address so these logical addresses we call them as the ip address basically the logical addresses the best analogy is say it is helping us to identify the end devices end devices so logical addresses helping us to identify the end device so to reach any of the end device we need a, its address that address support is provided by logical address that is ip address now while reaching this destination we need a support of multiple networks we need a support of multiple networks say to move from this node to the another node we need a support of physical address that is link address or physical address okay now to know it better i am using certain notations that notation is i am using notation n for ip address and i am using notation l for link addresses okay so in this example okay now i'll say that alice wants to send some frame to a bob now what exactly the alice will do okay so whenever say it's a job of the network layer to identify to which end device it wants to send the data as i said network layer uses the services of data link layer to send its data okay so what it will do is it will create a packet the alice will going to create a packet which will going to contain the address of say bob that is n8 ip address because the alice identifies this bob with the help of ip address so then it puts its own address that is n1 so these two are part of the header that is it is destination address and this is a source address and and in this part it will going to put the payload information or the data okay so this will be handed over to the data link layer now what data link layer do it will encapsulates this complete packet i'll going to call this as a packet i'm going to call this as a packet this packet will going to be encapsulated into the data link layer unit that is nothing but a frame that is nothing but a frame it encapsulates this complete packet in the frame and this frame will going to have the header say one of the information that will be present in the header is the addresses that are generated by physical layer i mean data link layer those are the physical addresses so source physical address and then destinations physical address 
so now see when it comes to the addresses that are put by the data network layer that is source address and destination address source address is n1 and destination address is n8 so the ip address of bob but when it comes to the data link layer it puts the source address as l1 that is the address of allies but destination address as l2 okay so how exactly it will come to know regarding this l2 how exactly it will going to put this address as l2 only how exactly this allies knows that r1 is sitting over here so whenever a network layer creates the packet with the help of network layer's routing table it will come to know regarding the device which is required to be used to reach allies okay which will be an intermediate device whose service is required to be used to reach the allies so once it knows regarding that it will come to know the address regarding this r1 okay so uh, how exactly it will come to know regarding the physical address of the r1 that is with the help of address resolution protocol arp i'll going to discuss regarding that in detail so once we discuss this example first then we'll talk regarding arp now this packet this frame is created and this frame will be made to move to a l2 uh, uh, is made to move to a r1 once it comes to a r1 okay just uh, say recall this figure in which we told regarding that you see this part so whenever it reaches over here okay so that decapsulation happens that is the reason we have shown a two pieces of data link layer in these intermediate devices you see in all these intermediate devices i have shown a two pieces of data link layer but whereas in n devices i have shown only one piece of data link layer okay so it is mainly because at two ends of the link okay at two ends of the link we will go to have two different physical addresses so this is the first part of the first piece of the data link layer and this will be the second piece of the data link layer so that is the reason it uses the l2 over here once it reaches once this frame reaches over here the packet will going to be decapsulated out of the frame it is removed out of the frame and it will going to create a new frame this r1 will going to create a new frame okay so which will going to include the address l4 as a source address and l5 as the destination address it will going to include these two addresses and the same packet will be encapsulated into the new frame see once this particular frame arrives over here okay so the packet will go to be decapsulated packet will go to be extracted out of this frame it will go to be encapsulated into the new frame and the addresses that new frame will go to bear is l5 and l4 l5 is the destination address l4 is the source address now one thing you keep it in mind this n n8 and n1 will not going to change in this router okay so this is the one which is generated by the source only this will going to be used by the destination not by the intermediate devices intermediate devices does not have any right to change or any control to change these addresses only the physical layer addresses will going to change at these intermediate devices now once this frames reaches over here okay again the same activity happens that decapsulation will takes place again new frame will going to be created and the packet will going to be encapsulated into the new frame so the new frame will now going to bear source address as l7 destination address as l8 okay so this will be the 
new addresses that are put into the frame again the packet will going to be a part of this payload say whatever the packet it is created over here so that itself will going to be encapsulated here okay so this packet originality of this packet like say including its address part and header part will not going to be changed it will be kept as it is again it will be encapsulated into the new frame it will be forwarded once it reaches over here the packet will be extracted and it will be handed over to the network layer so this is how the data link layer forwards the packet in a hop by hop nature to the destination one thing is clear in this whole discussion that every hop for every hop the address of the data link layer changes okay so till it reaches final destination this change of address keeps on takes place okay so every outgoing link will going to have a different physical address as well as logical address okay so this is the reason why at every hop the new link layer addresses changes no as i said at the beginning itself now see whenever i say a flow control error control issues that is only between these two links okay two ends of this links okay so when i say this flow control and the error control that is an issue between these two nodes okay it is not an issue between two end to end devices i hope it is clear we'll go next we'll going to move to a say addresses different types of link layer addresses or a physical address what way they look like so basically there are three different versions of addresses one is unicast address broadcast address and multicast address okay so the length of these addresses is 48 bits okay so the length of this addresses is 48 bits okay so now how to identify the unicast address broadcast address and multicast address so usually the second digit of this hexadecimal address okay hexadecimal address the second digit will help us to identify whether it is a unicast multicast or broadcast so the second digit if it is a odd number then it is unicast address it is a unicast address it must be a odd number if it is odd number then we call it as unicast address these addresses normally we write them in the form of hexadecimal number so it is 12 digit hexadecimal number okay so now these are separated by every two digit is separated by a colon okay so it is a hexadecimal number which is separated by colon this is what is a notation we uh, this is how we represent the 48 bit data link layer address okay many other times we also call it as mac address medium access control address okay now when if this second digit is a even number okay so one which is shown over here in the red if it is a even number okay again it is a 48 bit address so earlier it was odd that is why i was calling it as a unicast address if it is a even then it is a multicast link layer address it is a multicast link layer address okay the last one is if all these say 48 bits are one in other words if all these address if this address is of the type ff 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 okay so then we call it as broadcast address we call it as broadcast address now next we will discuss regarding address resolution protocol now basically this arp helps to find the link layer address it is providing a support to the nodes to find the link layer address okay normally the position of this arp now arp is not the part of 
data link layer even though it is helping the link layers to find the address okay it is helping the nodes to find the data link layer address but still it is not the part of the data link layer protocol so the arp that is address resolution protocol is part of network layer okay so usually the input to this arp is ip address with the help of ip address it obtains the link layer address of that node so ip address is a logical address input to this arp is a logical address output is physical address of that node if you input the logical address of some node the arp will going to provide the output of uh, output as a physical address of that node okay now how exactly this arp operates now if a system knows the logical address of a system b okay we'll assume that it is in a broadcasting environment okay so if system a knows the say logical address of system b okay so it wants to have a communication with the b to have a communication with the b it should know the physical address of b also so for that what it will do is it will use the arp so using the it sends a arp request which will going to contain the logical address of p and it broadcast this uh, arp request on the network okay so basically it don't know who is say having this logical address that is the reason it uses the technique of broadcasting this request so it just propagates a message saying that please provide your physical address by mentioning its logical address it is asking the node to provide its own physical address by mentioning its address okay say here in this case a is asking b to provide its physical address by mentioning the b's logical address in this request so this request will going to be broadcasted to everyone so it will going to go to all the nodes in the network but only the b will going to respond to that okay only b will going to provide the logical address uh, physical address of its own okay rest all the nodes will going to ignore this message they'll going to discard this message okay say in this example these nodes will going to discard the message that is sent by a that request that is sent by a only the node which will going to respond to that request is b okay so that is the reason b will going to reply back to the request that is generated by system a by providing its physical address that is l2 so this is how the arp will be used to solve the problem of the addresses so when some node knows the physical normally it will be a trend in the network that systems will have a information regarding the ip address of the destination but they don't know the physical address of the destination to get that physical address they use a technique of arp okay so how exactly the arp packet will going to look like it will going to contain these following fields such as hardware type protocol type hardware length protocol length operation whether it is a request type of operation or a reply type of operation okay what kind of a packet it is to indicate it that will be provided next is source hardware address source protocol address destinations hardware address okay normally this will be say it will not going to contain any information in the request packet okay so when it comes to the hardware address destinations this arp is basically used to know the destinations physical address or a hardware address okay so that is the reason in the request message this field is empty whereas destinations protocol address okay it will be mentioned over it protocol address is ip address okay so these two are ip addresses so this is anyway source physical address source 
IP address, destinations physical address, destinations IP address. In the request packet it is blank. Okay, in the reply packet it will going to have a some value. Okay, so this is how the ARP packet looks like. Now when it comes to a hardware, okay, it is of the type whether it is a LAN type of a hardware or a WAN type of a protocol. Mm, and when we say a protocol, it is a network layer protocol. Now we'll see one simple example in which a host with the IP address N1 and a MAC address as L1. That means uh, its physical address is L1, the host physical address, and its IP address is say N1, has a packet to send to another host with the IP address n2 and a physical address l2 okay so the arp packet uh, two hosts are connected to a say network which is shown over here in the figure and we are asking uh, uh, actually we are showing you uh, how exactly the arp request and uh, response messages are look like here okay now see as i said at the beginning so I'll ignore the other fields, hardware address and all. So I'm only interested in these mm, these addresses. Okay. So to initially, as I said, say that L1, L1 is a physical address of the sender. N1 is the logical address of the sender, that is IP address. Okay. So these two will going to be there in their in those two fields. But whereas the physical address of the destination is zero see this is a request message because of which this particular thing does not contain any information whereas the logical address of the destination will going to be put over here unless that logical address is known okay this packet will not going to reach the destination this is what is the request message looks like yes then for this there will be a reply message which will going to contain you see there is a change Okay, reply message will all, almost look same as that of the request message except this. Okay, this is absent over here in the request message. Okay, here are all the zeros whereas here in this case the specific address of the destination is mentioned. Okay, this is what is a reply message. Now, again this request and reply they get exchanged with the help of frames. Okay, that you keep it in mind. This information whatever is getting exchanged that ERP packet which will going to sit in the data part okay which will going to sit in the data part so this ARP message complete message it does not have its own body okay you see this whole message okay which is in this format okay which will going to be part of this data payload part okay this whole ARP will going to be the payload part and when it comes to a sending the request message on the network it will either use the broadcast address or multicast address in this case it is a multicast frame it will be multicasted from this LAN to all the nodes then the reply will going to have specific source address and a destination address okay again it is a unicast frame Now we'll see one more example how exactly it will work on say point to point network. Look at first we'll see the situation where allies is connected to the Bob with the help of two routers that is R1 and R2. Okay, so that means the communication that is happening between allies and the Bob is happening through multiple networks. Just to say give an idea regarding this complete uh, mm, situation we have taken a say slightly complicated network in which we have multiple we have a support of multiple networks to reach the destination now you see the first whatever the message that is created at a ally site now it wants to know the ip ad uh, link address of allies okay it wants to know the link address of the allies first so for that what it will going to do is it will going to create the packet you see in this figure it is clearly shown that first it will going to create 
the packet yes the network layer packet which includes the data source address and the destination address as soon as Alice wants to start its communication it will not bother whether it has a uh, link physical address of this Bob or not because it don't know where exactly the Bob is situated yes so what it will do is it will create the packet which contains the network layer address that is source address and the destination address and it creates the packet and this packet will be handed over to the routing protocols see normally this whole activity of communication not only happens with one or two protocols it needs the support of multiple protocols so when it comes to the network layer network layer uses a support of say multiple protocols such as ARP IP and some routing protocols okay now rather than going into a details of all those things at this juncture okay it is not advisable to go into a details of that thing so first simply you will say that network layer once it after preparing the packet it hands over this packet to the routing protocols which are present in the network layer again this routing protocol will provide a information which path to be used to reach the destination okay so once the routing pro protocol provides that information to the network layer okay with the help of that information the network layer provides this complete information to the physic uh, data link layer which creates the frame now see the network layer has provided a information through which path the packet is required to be sent to the uh, physical layer so what physical layer will do i mean uh, what data link layer will do data link layer will create the frame okay and it puts the source address and the destination address look at the destination address over here okay so the destination address is l1 why it is l1 it, why it is not putting this destination address because the information that is provided by the routing protocol is to go to this point yes so it says that to reach this destination you go to this point first yes so to going to this point it needs the address of this node okay so it uses the physical address of this node and it goes to that point with the help of this arrangement thereafter you see at router r1 what exactly happens now once this packet comes to the router it decapsulates it you see this decapsulation action happens at this router r1 okay first decapsulate this whole thing then it again recreates the new frame it recreates the new frame say before creating the before recreating the new frame it uses these two addresses so what is the destination address that is nb again routing router here it uses its routing table to know which path to be used to reach this destination once it comes to know regarding which path to be used to reach this destination based on that it creates a new frame that is the reason why at every hop the physical address gets changed because the routers will not going to be only going to have one or two links it will going to have a multiple outgoing links which link to be used to reach the destination it will going to be decided by the physical uh, network layer once the network layer decides which path to be used to reach uh, to be used to reach the destination then based on that the data link layer will going to create the frame that is the reason at every hop the data link layer address gets changed okay so you see in the second part so when it comes to this end okay so while sending the packet out of this link okay because this is the path which it has to use to reach the destination so it creates a new frame which includes the address of destination address as l2 uh, so destination address as l3 and source address as l2 so you see at this case at this juncture the address gets changed again at a new hop when it comes to a r2 after once it reaches the r2 okay again that action of decapsulation takes place first so you see the decapsulation action happens over here after decapsulation again it recreates the new frame which will going to bear the address of destination
so this is lb is the destination address physical address of destination and it recreates the frame one thing is clear at every hop the physical address gets changed okay but whereas this na and nb you see in all these communications the logical address remains same okay log logical address is not getting changed it remains same logical address is the one which is providing the complete information to reach the destination that is the one which is a source to find the path that information helps to find the path to reach the destination okay so this is how the communication that happens in the network layer so now one thing is clear in all these cases okay even in this situation also it is possible to use arp but anyway this is the way that sender reaches the destination this is all about data link layer details in the next video we will going to discuss regarding certain details of ip address and what are the different types of ip addresses that are in a use certain details regarding the network layer we will going to discuss in the next video Thank you very much.